Hi, my name is Gareth Morgan and welcome to the MVP podcast, where my purpose is simple, to help you close the gap between your potential and your greatest performance so that you can rise to the top and have the impact and influence I know you can have. Enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome to the MVP podcast. My name's Gareth Morgan, and today we are going to get mad with mid. You may be thinking, what is mid? Let me tell you right now, if you don't know what mid is, then you are not down with the kids. Even the fact that I said that shows that I'm not down with the kids. My children, when I told them that I'm going to do this podcast on mediocrity, they said, ah, that's mid. In other words, that's something that is bang average. They've got a terminology for it. We may not call it mid, we call it mediocrity. But whatever you call it, that's what I want to speak to today. You know, this podcast and the content that I put out really is about helping you become the MVP that you were created to be. But in order to do that, we've got to battle through the MPC version of ourselves. Remember, MPC is that non-playable character. It's the losing version of ourselves. It's the version of ourselves that is self-critical, self-focused, self-abasing, and it is holding you back from delivering your highest and best contribution. And, And the way that we win the battle... The way that we empower the MVP version of ourselves, that winning version, is to understand what are the distinctions that we need to embrace, that we need to empower in order to move to the next version of ourselves. In other words, it's not an overnight journey. It's a constant process. And it's a constant process of us, first of all, becoming becoming aware of that distinction, then understanding how that becomes a barrier to us making progress on our mission, because as an MVP, you are mission-led, okay? You have a mission that you are on that is that demand as to why you need to deal with the MPC that's going to create havoc and cause you to miss out on delivering on your mission, and then to make the changes, I mean, it's all very well becoming aware and then understanding the barrier that that distinction creates, but we've got to then make a change. In other words, we've got to identify a tactic that we're going to deploy that's going to bring about a change of behavior. So in this podcast, I'm going to give us five ways and five reasons that we need to get mad with mid, why we've got to declare all out war on mediocrity. So are you ready? Number one, mediocrity is an impediment that hijacks your message. If you have a mission, which you should have, then that mission is about delivering a message. It's a message that you represent that you need to deliver to the world. But ultimately, Whilst we hear messages with our ears, the truth is messages that remain with us, messages that truly impact us, are the messages that we feel. The problem with mediocrity is you can hear a great message, but ultimately what you feel is at odds with that message. There was a great slogan, I'm not sure if they still use this in this coffee company, It's a famous uh, coffee company, and the slogan goes, pour your soul into every cup. Great slogan. In other words, getting all those that are working for this company focusing on every single cup, because ultimately that business is built upon those transactions. Every single cup matters, and pour your soul into it. In other words, they realize that the level of excellence that you deliver, which of course excellence is the antithesis of mediocrity, when you 
pour your soul into something. The, the idea is that you are understanding how important it is, that you want this person not just to taste a great coffee, but to feel something, to feel valued. Now, of course, the truth is, when you pour your soul into something, you have to ask yourself the question, what is in the soul? Because ultimately, mediocrity versus excellence, let's look at that battle, is about an internal belief that we're embracing. It's an internal philosophy that we've accepted. And the truth is, that can be the message in my soul. So my soul could carry a message of excellence or a message of mediocrity. So whilst pouring your soul into every cup is a admirable and a great slogan, the question has to be asked, well, make sure what is in your soul is worth putting in the cup. Because if mediocrity is in your soul, then you are going to pour that into the cup. So MVPs understand that we have to challenge ourselves on what standards we are embracing. Because that's what determines what we carry in our soul. You may have heard of a phrase called cognitive dissonance. In other words, this is when we in our actions are out of alignment with a standard that we value. So, for instance, if my value is excellence and my behavior is mediocre, I'm going to feel that cognitive dissonance. In other words, there's going to be an internal jarring, there's going to be an internal conflict that I carry, and that creates a low state of, of feeling. And of course, that then ends up building a momentum because if you've ever got into a low state, then you know sometimes it can be difficult to get out of. And so MVPs recognize that I have to be bothered about this value of excellence. I have to identify where I am falling short of my own standards and I need to challenge myself. I can't settle for the fact that I have embraced mediocrity. I need to get angry. That's why I said we need to get mad with mid because we can all fall into a mediocre state of mind and therefore deliver mediocre performance. But we've got to get mad with that because that's what an MVP does. An MVP does fail. They're not perfect. So that's good news. But the distance between when we fall short of our standards and then when we do something about it gets shorter and shorter because we have this desire to get back up and to challenge that standard, to raise the bar, not to settle, but to set a new standard. And of course, mediocrity can often become, uh, in an environment, it can become the, the pervading value. And the challenge with that is then what you get is you start to get corporate dissonance. If you've got any people around you that have that value of excellence, you start to get a group of people who, who, who are like, this is not good enough. And then usually mediocrity, and we're going to talk about this in the next point, mediocrity spreads. And if you're not careful in a, in a team or in a, a corporation or an organization uh, or in a church, the majority can end up embracing mediocrity and you become part of the remnant. You become, become part of the, 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 the small minority who are saying like, this has to change. But let me encourage you, stay mad with mid. Stay mad with mediocrity because you can turn it around. But it starts with you recognizing I am the problem and I am the solution. I need to deal with any level of mediocrity that I have embraced, challenge it, and I need to start to raise the bar, okay? I need to start to raise the bar of excellence in my own life, in my own professional life, in my personal life. So here's the tactic. I want to challenge you. Make a promise on an activity. Make a promise to someone that is difficult to keep. See, that's what excellence is. Excellence is making a promise that is difficult to keep. So have a think about what promise that could be. 
And I want you to share that promise with somebody. I want you to say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And I am going to do this for you. It's going to be challenging, but I'm going to do it. It may be to an upline leader. It may be to a team that you lead. It may be to someone in your family. It may be to your husband or your wife. But let's fight back mediocrity by making a promise that is difficult to keep. With the church at Laodicea in Revelation 3, 15 to 16, Jesus says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Our creator God, Christ himself, got mad with mid. Why? Because when we operate from mediocrity, we are not able to truly function as we've been designed. We cannot become the MVP that we've been created to become. And therefore, we cannot fulfill the mission that we're designed for. And when you're not fulfilling the mission you're designed for, and you're, you've stopped pursuing that MVP nature that you carry, then you are on a downward spiral. You lose hope, you lose joy, you lose peace, and ultimately you fall out of love with yourself, God, and those around you. I mean, that's the extreme, but we have to get mad with mid because God got mad with mid. Let me just take 30 seconds to tell you about the MVP Journey course, which has just been released it's entitled From Misfit to MVP. And this course is a seven-part course that takes you through the seven stages of the MVP journey that takes you out of a life of mediocrity and sets you on the pathway to significance. Through this tried and tested biblical pattern, you'll learn how to interpret negative emotions into clues that reveal your mission and the stepping stones to a life of impact. It will help you build confidence to break out of those limiting beliefs and behaviors and see the real you on a new stage of influence. And finally, you will learn the habits that help you defeat the excuses and overcome barriers to deliver consistent results that leads to an abundance of increase in your career, your finances, your relationships, your health, and your spiritual life. Go check out the MVP online course today. Number two, mediocrity is contagious. Mediocrity is the silent killer. And it's a silent killer because we don't see in a short space of time the true cost of living a mediocre existence or allowing mediocre behavior mediocrity compounded over time has catastrophic impact on your mission and on your ability to deliver on your potential. You see, mediocrity ultimately is a pattern of thinking and then it becomes a pattern of behavior. In a team environment, when one person lowers the bar of their personal standards, then the temptation is to think, well, why should I bother? If no one else is bothering, why should I bother? In other words, naturally, our human temptation is to allow our standards to be dictated from the outside in. And there lies the problem. Because MVPs, how we've been wired is we have been wired to be values-driven. Values-driven means I hold on to the value, in this case of excellence, regardless of the behavior of other people. Even if others are allowing themselves to fall short of their own standards or to fall short of the corporate, collective standard. An MVP says, no, I hold fast to the standard. I hold fast to the value because that is my personal conviction. Ultimately, a value is rooted in self-worth. So when we allow ourselves to be dictated by the outside in, we're deriving our value from external factors, which 
you can do for some period of time, but is not a consistent way of living because ultimately there isn't always going to be something or someone to give you that value. We have to have a value that says, this is who I am. I am excellence. Therefore, everything that I do is going to be an extension of that value. The reason why mediocrity becomes contagious is because we all default if we're not careful and we don't consciously choose. We default to self-loathing, self-critical, self-abasing internal conversations. And ultimately, this creates a focus on self. And that's where mediocrity thrives. Because ultimately, excellence is about a standard that I embrace based upon the fact that I value myself and what I have to offer. I value the people that I am serving and I value God. Therefore, I am going to deliver excellence. You see, it's an inside out philosophy. It's an inside out paradigm. You're different than those who embrace mediocrity because you're an MVP. You're driven by the value of excellence. Therefore, Today, I want to challenge you to raise the bar. Here's today's tactic. Choose an activity that you are going to raise the standard on. I want you to identify an activity that's going to be for the benefit of somebody else and then commit to it. Raise that expectation that you have of yourself. And as you practice the value, you deepen the conviction of excellence and you fend off the contagious nature of mediocrity. Romans 12, 1 to 2, Paul says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We've got to challenge ourselves when we start to conform and actively be transformed by placing a higher standard on ourselves because we're driven by the value of excellence, which ultimately reflects a greater level of glory for God. Mediocrity rules where vision has died. We become average. We accept mediocrity when we can't see a way forward. It starts to reduce our desire and our hunger. When we stop seeing a way forward, we can be in danger of allowing doubt to set in. And when doubt starts to set in, it's a bit like rust on a car. Once rust starts in one part of the car, if it's not dealt with, it begins to spread. We need to understand that vision needs constant attention. It needs to be generated daily. We need to visit the future that we're expecting. We need to smell it, taste it, breathe it, experience it. That's why we have an imagination. Because what happens then, we start then to have a a different lens through which we see our day. We have a winning conversation which starts to ignite faith and certainty. And we start to see opportunity and we start to see ways past problems. Challenges become opportunities, all because we've changed our internal belief system. When we, when we pump prime vision, mediocrity is, is challenged. It begins to, to, to die. It begins to shrink. So right now, have you visited the future? Have you visited the vision that you have? If so, that's one way that you can start to get mad with mid. One tactic we can use to generate vision and to unlock the power of vision is to spend 10 minutes today answering the question, what boundary does my future vision demand that I strengthen 
today? What boundary does my future vision demand that I strengthen today? A boundary is focus. That might be a time focus. It may be a financial focus. It may be an energy focus. But we start to put strong boundaries in place when we, we raise the stakes of, of how important our resources are today because the future demands it. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Wisdom is speaking today. It's giving you and I an instruction. We need to turn up the dial on that revelation. In other words, that ability to see what is not as though it were. And when we do that, we embrace restraint. Restraint is discipline. It's a boundary. We embrace boundaries today. We're able to say no quicker and easier with no fear of shame because the future demands it. You know, the thing about MVPs is that they get a coach because their mission demands that delivering anything less than their best is not an option. Do you have the desire to reach the highest level of your industry? Do you want to be a voice of influence that can deliver positive change and leave a significant legacy, a legacy of leadership? I set out to work with people aspiring to be world-class at what they do. I'm looking to work with those who aren't afraid to embrace the demand of their significant mission and recognize the essential role of a world-class coach who can work alongside them to help them develop the level of distinctions that will see them rise to the very top. Go check out the MVP Leadership Program today. Mediocrity is a sign that people are hiding. Think about it. NPCs are non-playable characters. And NPCs allow mediocrity to thrive in their life and in the environments in which they work. And when mediocrity rules, then the real versions of who we are as people do not surface. And people hide. They hide behind mediocrity. They use excuses. They excuse behavior. They cover excuses with compassionate reasons as to why that person shouldn't be challenged or why that person should be allowed to carry on doing that mediocre behavior. But ultimately, MVPs do not hide. MVPs make themselves ready and willing to be the first to speak up. They're willing to go and to be different, even if it means going alone and doing what is necessary. MVPs do not hide because they affect the game. MVPs are willing to challenge the way things are around here because they are innovators. They are creators. They upset the mediocre norms because they recognize the high stakes of what mediocrity ultimately is trying to bring down, which is the future vision. It's the mission that you're trying to deliver on. Mediocrity is exposed by big dreams and big dreamers. Dreamers are attracted to dreamers. But also, deniers are repelled. In other words, those who deny reality, which is what happens when people embrace mediocrity. They deny what is truly going on. Today, spend 10 minutes reflecting on what consensus maybe you've started to buy into that's keeping you mediocre and make a decision today to challenge the consensus. Ezra 10 verse 4 says, Arise, for it is your task, and we are with you. Be strong and do it. Getting mad with mid, bringing excellence right into the heart of mediocrity is your task as an MVP. Arise. We are. The collective MVPs are with you. Ultimately, 
God is with you. Be strong. Go in the strength that you have and do it and be it. Mediocrity is an animal that will bite back. Let me warn you, not everyone is going to thank you for bringing excellence into a mediocre environment. It's like going into a dark room that is full of people and switching on the light. The initial reaction from everyone is, ah, I can't see. And then some say, switch the light off. They resist the light. Others begin to adapt and recognize the benefits of the light. Either which way, be wary that you're going to get a reaction. Why is it that some people want you to hit the switch and to turn off the light? Because excellence reveals what mediocrity has got up to. Where mediocrity exists, there is wastefulness. Where mediocrity exists, there is virtual progress, where people have presented progress, but really all it is is a virtual progress with no real substance. It's like a vapor. It doesn't really exist. Ultimately, people who embrace mediocrity want to remain in that wasteful place where they over-deploy resources in the wrong places. They expend energy on activity that isn't truly moving the needle and isn't making a difference. But you're different. You're an MVP and you're willing to deal with the reaction of turning the light on because the mission demands that you see things for how they really are. Brutal honesty is the only way to make the necessary changes to bring significant progress. Tactic that we can deploy is asking ourselves the question, because it all starts with ourselves. Am I wasteful with my time? Time is our most precious resource, and where there is wastefulness, there's mediocrity. So how can I raise the bar of personal excellence when it comes to how I use my spare time, any time that I'm currently wasting? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. There is a battle between the new creation and the old version. When Christ comes in, he is the light. The light shines in the dark places and spaces. Initially, There's a challenge because it means we have to admit that we've been wrong. We've adopted the wrong thinking, wrong beliefs. But ultimately, when we see the vision of who we really are and what we've been called to in terms of our purpose, then we we start to embrace the light because it enables us to be brutally honest with now what needs to change. And through Christ, we can make those changes.